What's up, Pandus? Peter from Panda here. Hey, just got this watch. It kind of gives it away on the top. I'm pretty excited about it. I just bought it. It's a Bulova, and uh, I'm going to unbox it. This is true unboxing. I have not looked in here yet, and it comes in uh, a box within a box, as a lot of decent watches do, you know, Invictas do too, um, but I'm pretty impressed with this case. This watch is one of the um, Bulova Accu Swiss line watches, and I got it sight unseen, and one of the reasons is because I just like the design. I'll be really honest with you. When I talk about Bulova, and I'm looking at Bulova's designs these days, uh, I'm pretty impressed. Um, it looks like it comes with quite a bit of packaging. I mean, nothing over the top, but uh, that is what it is. Uh, the Bulova Accu Swiss name here in this kind of piano lacquer box. So I'm pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Official timekeeper, Manchester United. We'll get into that. Um, but recently, Bulova has had some management oh you know changes the i think the president is new the design director is new uh, i've seen interviews with them i think they are interesting guys but what is probably most interesting is that bulova to me really has been fairly nimble in terms of their design i'm actually pretty much a fan you know I've had Bulova watches before, uh, you know, uh, many of them I didn't do reviews on, including my early precisionists and things like that. Decent watches, maybe a little too showy, and I like where they have gone with them, and they've really kind of been uh, good at not only coming up with contemporary designs, but coming up with the, with the right designs at the right time. Now, you may disagree with me to each his own, but... The panda thinks that, and, I, and I'll let me let me explain it on this watch. So, uh, Bulova is an American watch brand, as you know. They were famous for their tuning fork movements, which was kind of captured in the early Bulova logos, which don't seem to be anywhere, which look like a tuning fork. Um, and then, you know, which was a quartz movement, and then they kind of used a lot of standard quartz movements. Um, but they've kind of stepped up here. They've kind of in some ways given in, but in a lot of ways placated a lot of people who said, well, they don't have automatic movements, they don't have Swiss movements, you know, I'm not going to own an American watch. Well, the Accu Swiss line has done that. And even with the Richard Branson watch, I said that probably could have been branded Accu Swiss because it hadn't had a movement in it. These haven't had a movement in it. And what I like is I saw the design of this in, in person. There aren't a lot of videos of them online. This watch is a little cold. I'm sorry about that. Just sitting in my car on the on the way home. Um, but so you do get an automatic movement. Now what you don't get is a exhibition window in the back to see that pretty movement. But on top of that, you get a lot of watch for not a ridiculous amount of money. And this one is really cool because what they've done here is they've actually made a fairly small watch. And I wanna say, I think this watch case is a 42 millimeter round watch case. And that's fairly small to my preference, but they have these really cool lugs up at the top that have a really wide uh, kind of lug around, you know, this hexagon bolt that goes all the way through apparently it looks like so looks like this locks into that uh that shape there and then it looks like there's kind of a tri prong screwdriver that you would use to tighten it down which is kind of cool it also looks like it's on the the spring bars or the the lugs on the watch band itself we'll take a look and see if we can actually confirm that it certainly looks like it that is definitely thicker than a spring bar so to to replace the watch straps on this right off the bat i'm going to say i think you need this tool the tool that takes that off looks like it's the tool that takes that off and so maybe this isn't something you can do on your own it's probably a tool you can find and maybe watchmakers carry it but i'm not familiar with that pattern kind of like Apple using pentalobe screws but all right so the cool thing about it is these little kind of details are kind of like diamond prongs or what do you call them you know prongs on a setting holding a diamond in you know the more prongs you have the bigger the diamond looks it's a little bit of an optical illusion so you actually get a fairly small fairly petite 42 ish millimeter watch uh that's round but you get these kind of broad lugs and what's a little bit of an optical illusion is you get kind of a, this angled edge on each of them so you have kind of a thin border right around that lug, and then you have the kind of this larger collar around that. So you actually have a lot, kind of a lot of metal, but it's kind of hidden a little bit in in the, the angles, you know? And, and so it looks a little bigger than that, but when you're wearing it, presumably it'll wear and feel 
a lot like a much uh, smaller watch. Now, the other thing I will show you here in a second as I kind of put this watch on is that uh, with a lot of rubber bands, you have to size them for your wrist. And so I haven't done that, so I've kind of finagled it here to, to get on my wrist. Um, but, you know, that's a totally wearable watch. About a seven and a half inch wrist on my wrist, and I just dig it. You know, one of the things I ha happens when I get watches is sometimes I get them, and I shoot videos like this for you because I, there aren't a lot of videos out there, and I'm always looking for opinions. And um, and I didn't get a chance to check this out in person, and sometimes I get a watch, buy it, and I'm like, nope, this one's going back. Well, I, I really like this. I like the color. I like the design. It looks kind of meaty, chunky. Um, an industrial but isn't kind of oversized overbearing and it's one that could you could wear every day and looks like it would fit pretty nicely under your sleeve i just i just dig it it does have some pretty decent weight you know especially for uh an automatic watch and, and here's where let's get back to that point what they've done here is looks like three pieces kind of an inner case wheel the like a rim on a car and then a case back with this polished edge and brushed back. And then a top piece with this polished edge and then kind of the brushed top piece. There are a little, there are a little polished kind of, um, you know, decorative pieces here uh, flanking the lugs. But this kind of multi-piece look is really cool. And then the lugs on the inside um, come, you know, stick out from the middle and they're they're brushed and they kind of have a nice contrast with all the other polished pieces. Now the lugs don't dip down very far. So keep that in mind. A lot of lugs, you know, they do curl down, but they don't actually get lower than the bottom of the watch. So one of the things I was thinking of when I put it on, just put it on, I was, I was like, you know, it's probably going to sit really high. You're going to have to really kind of tighten it down and it's going to be floating up there. But I almost want to say, and you can see it maybe here. Let's see if we can use the box to help me illustrate this. But, and let's put a little white background behind it. See if that helps. But you can see, as I put the flat edge of that box to the back of the watch, the watch is actually bowed. It's a little concave. So, you know, what's... <laughs> Like I said, I'm I'm really liking these Bulova guys, man. Maybe I should send them my resume. There's a um, there's a little bit of curvature to the back. It is really really subtle, but I could feel it. Oh, let's get rid of this. But I could feel it as soon as I put it on, and it was a super comfortable watch, uh, as it said on my wrist. So keep that in mind, you know, uh, because big watches like my Diesel or, or things like that aren't always the most comfortable watches to wear, especially if they don't have a really aggressive uh, curved dropping lug design. This doesn't have it, and this is far more comfortable. And so it's kind of the little details like that really impress me about what Bulova is doing. Now again, it's just a beautiful watch that what is interesting here is, as I mentioned, the official timekeeper of the Manchester United. Why that's important is there is a Manchester United logo painted right there on this that side. It's really hard to see. Now, I wish I could tell you more about Manchester United, but I don't really follow the WNBA much. You know, uh, women's sports um, just don't really interest me, so I can't tell you that much about it. I'm just kidding. I'm just I'm just trolling you soccer fans. Uh, obviously, Manchester United, storied soccer club, and I'm calling it soccer club because football is football. There is no American football. It's just football, and then there's soccer. Anyway, so the logo's there, which is kind of cool, and they have a cool looking logo. It's kind of looks like a looks like a fireman's uh, station house logo to me. But so, um, but it's really subtle on there. the The one that they gave to the Manchester United players was black and red, so much more of the Manchester United colors. But Bulova is really kind of stretching out, and I think they needed to make a decent watch for guys who are making crazy, crazy money, right? They're, you've got they, they they're going to want a, uh, a an automatic movement. They're going to want something that's nicely designed. They're not going to want to wear something that's um, embarrassing, right? the The cool thing is here you kind of have this anodized aluminum colored. I don't know if that is aluminum or steel, but it's it's got that kind of anodized look blue with the bull of a logo and the crown is even kind of cool and industrial looking in that it's got a little bit of um you know uh, the indentations on the side here it's not kind of your standard coin edge it's uh, just i don't know more space age looking and 
Let's set it loose there. So we popped it out and you know, pull it out to the first position and it looks like that does the time. So no problem there. Just roll it out around here a second and just see what uh, what does. Okay, so you gotta roll past midnight for, for to move the date. But there's a couple things and I can hear it winding now. Let's see if we can get this thing working for you. There it goes. The hand is off, so screw that in. Um, sapphire crystal, and that's, you know, flat. Um, I can't particularly tell if it's air coated. I mean, it appears to have maybe a little bit, but it's really showing a lot of glare there too. So maybe not, but you know, it's actually not bad, but it kind of, yeah, it seems like it has a little light air coating, but the dial is where I wanted to show you. I didn't mean to get so deep into it, but I wanted to sing the praises of Bulova. Um, one of the things that you can notice on this dial is it has kind of this graphite gray blackish, uh, you know, it's like, it looks like a brushed steel or aluminum dial. You know, it's all the grain is going up and down, which is cool. Inner bezel here with the minute and the hour markings um, on, again, kind of the anodized aluminum blue. And then the hour markers on the inside, again, that same blue. What's cool is there are two reliefs put into the hour markings. This 12 and 6 look like applied three-dimensional numbers floating you know uh, on top of that dial pretty cool but what's really cool is that it's contrasted with these hour markers that are reversed and sunk into the dial now i don't know if those are pressed in and then painted presumably they do it in the same manner that they would create the bezel around the date window there but it's just cool because most of the time most watches have applied hour markers that sit above it and it's just an easy thing to do and it looks good and it, this is just one of those small subtle details to me that says you know we're, we're doing something a little different and you know it's something you might not even catch if you weren't really looking at it but you know each of these things is like a little trough kind of like a little uh enterprise uh, torpedo um you know the old school the the original crew where the torpedoes look like flattened uh tylenol pills the um the hands again are blue and you can see that the hour and the minute hands are 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 crimped are bent so they're three-dimensional so they kind of have that flat they're kind of like snoopy's doghouse roof you know they're they're kind of flat with the, the edges bent down kind of like a a wing um must p51 mustang and the second hand there is uh slim what well, just standard two-dimensional but um with the painted edge uh end on the uh, second hand so and you can see that by its movement it certainly suggests it's the automatic that it says it does. Although it could be the precisionist, although on my precisionist, the precisionist second hand on that quartz movement actually clicks more times than it does on automatic movements. Uh, we'll, we'll check and see if there's any loom on anything, but you know, I just think it's fairly subtle. It's industrial, it looks great. Uh, hats off to the Bulova guys. And even the Bulova logo, the name is, uh, is applied there, the Bulova in silver. Now, the only thing I don't really like my only gripe so far is that the AccuSwiss, to me, the logo right there and on the watch in kind of that monotype cursive font is a little cheesy to me. I, you know, I don't, I, I guess I don't get why they did that. I'd kind of go for something a little more, I don't know, mono, modern. It just kind of looks a little like Comic Sans, but, you know, everyone's going to have their opinions. You guys might love it. So, the rubber band here is really textured on the inside. It's kind of got this aggressive stippling, this angled stippling on both the top and the bottom. It's obviously the Bulova watch. Um, and then on the, the, the outside, again, kind of giving it a very space age with heavy angles on the band right there. But it's smooth all the way around. So, I think it's just really good. And presumably, you could replace this with what you want. But my issue here is that because these the bars are kind of not your traditional spring bars um be careful about what bands you try to get the, to fit on there because i you might have to get it straight from boulevard or find one that uses kind of more of those um those larger lugs a couple of uh, free floating uh retaining bands there and then a butterfly release clasp and the the issue with this is for each person oh which is cool you'll just uh you don't have to trim this like you do on some of the Tag Warrior Aqua Racers, 
Um, this one is just one where you can you can fit it in to whatever position fits your wrist and then it's going to close like this and then you tuck that tail under there. So, um, you know, and this one is all still wrapped in plastic, but I can tell you the uh, deployment clasp on this feels good. I mean, you know, everything is solid, fits well, you know, brushed finish and, you know, no sharp or kind of unfinished edges and everything moves smoothly. So really, you know, like I said, really nice. Now, here's where you might start losing your lunch and don't lose it quite yet, but these watches are not cheap. And for, if, you, if you've been a Bull of a fan before, you may know that um, you can go in, or one of my earliest watches was a Bulova I bought at for 120 bucks. It was great, but it was a mineral crystal and quartz movement. This one is a list price, I believe, of $1,425. Um, so almost $1,500 maybe out the door. You, you, the street price on it is going to be significantly less. I've seen them for 1000 or even they're under. Um, so, but, you know... It, and and write some comments. I'd love to hear you flame me on this because I, there are people out there that are like a thousand dollars for a quartz watch. I'm never going to pay that. I'd want an automatic. And then there are guys that are like a thousand dollars for an automatic with an Eta movement. I would never want that. I want an in-house movement. So, you know, no one's ever happy. But I do think it's a lot of style. Hats off to the Boulevard guys. Keep 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 on keeping on, brother. I really dig it. The Boulevard Accu Swiss automatic with black dial, Manchester United logo with stainless steel case. Peter Van Panda. Out.